Welcome to Theodore Parker Church, uh, Unitarian Universalist Church, that is. My name is Ruth Kahn, and I am on the Music and Worship Committee and also on the board. I sing in the choir, and I'm delighted to be here with you today. As we enter into worship, we bring with us all the sorrows and joys of our week, and we know that we are held in loving community here we are, we are reminded that we are part of something larger than ourselves. Here, we seek to counter oppression, to work for healing and justice in, bruised, in a bruised and broken world. Here, we invite all of you to bring your perspectives, your beliefs and doubts, and all that is unique and wondrous about you to our service in the spirit of love. All are welcome here. For those joining us in person, a few things you may want to know. Our congregation is mask optional, and if you would like to be seated in an area where others are also wearing a mask, the section along this wall um, is reserved for people who are wearing masks. You can use the QR code at either entrance or in your pews to pull up the order of service on your phone or take out one of the large print copies available at either entrance. Our service is being recorded today and will be available on YouTube later. If you would like to have a joy or concern shared with the congregation today during our meditation and prayer, we invite you to fill out a card anytime during, before our meditation hymn. It's on the table over here to your right. You may also light a silent candle of joy or concern at any time during our worship service, or use the space in the far back corner for private reflection during the service. It's in that corner over there. Many thanks to Kevin, who is our camera point person today, and to Jennifer, who is our Zoom usher. If you're new to Theodore Parker Church or are visiting today, we'd love to stay in touch you are invited to fill out a connection card, which will give you an opportunity to sign up for our weekly updates and help us welcome you. A link to the connection card will be in the chat, as well as our contact information. Those joining us here in the sanctuary are encouraged to fill out the contact card, and you'll find in our pews within the welcome brochure. We'd like to take a moment to greet one another. For those of you on Zoom, Putting your video on for this time helps us connect. Uh, and uh, Kevin, can you please put our sanctuary screen on gallery view so we can see our off-site congregation? Let's give each other a big wave. Sanctuary folks, the camera is under the, clou under the clock in the back. <laughs> As we continue to greet each other, if online, you may post a hello in the chat. If you are physically in the sanctuary, we invite you to greet one another and say good morning, and please ask for a consent before offering a hug or a handshake. Please greet one another.
Good morning. I'm Reverend Heather Concannon. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the minister of this congregation. And our opening words come from Maureen Killerin. Love is the aspiration, the spirit that moves and inspires this faith we share. Rightly understood, love can nurture our spirits and transform the world. May we honor and embody the power and the blessing of the love we need, the love we give, the love we are challenged always to remember and to share. So friends, I want to make a special announcement this morning before we do our opening hymn, which is that as many of you saw on Friday, we sent out a special email with some news about some staffing changes. And Michael Johnson, our music director of 16 years, has shared with us that he will be wrapping up his time at the end of the church year. And I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge Michael and also to make sure that everybody has heard this news. Um, and to, to just acknowledge what a big change this is for our congregation. Michael's been here 16 years, which is, um, you know, I've only been here for a fraction of that time. Um, and I know that's longer than many people in the room. I know that many people have worked very closely with Michael. Um, and I want to just talk a little bit about kind of what's next and give you some, some sense of a roadmap for the spring and also just to... Um, just to name that, that this is a big deal and that this is, um, can come with a lot of feelings of gratitude, maybe sadness, worry about what's next. So I wanted to just tell you a little bit about what the church leaders are doing. We're working on a plan to hire a one-year acting director of music ministry who will um, be, will go through a search process this spring. Some of that will happen while I'm on parental leave, but our personnel team is well equipped to take care of that and to communicate what they need to communicate with me about that. Um, and we'll have more information about all of that coming out soon. But most of all, I just want to take this moment to acknowledge how many gifts Michael has brought to this congregation and to encourage us this spring to celebrate Michael in so many ways, um, and we'll have many opportunities to celebrate and to say goodbye, but I just wanted to take this moment to say thank you. It's been a joy, and we are so grateful to you, and we wish you all the best. So. Friends, you can stay risen for our opening hymn, which is Morning Has Come. I invite us to rise in body or spirit. Morning has come, arise and greet the day. Dance with joy and sing a song of gladness. The light of hope here shines upon each face. May it bring faith to guide our journey home. A new day once more the gift is given wonder fills this moment shared together the light of peace here shines upon each face may it bring faith to guide our journey Open our eyes to see that life abounds. Open hearts to welcome it among us. The light of love here shines upon each face. May it bring faith to guide our journey home.
hope you'll join me now in saying our words of shared covenant, our child sighting words, which we say each week, both in English and in Spanish. Spanish is in honor of our sibling community in Plas Vuelas, El Salvador. The words will be up on the screen, and I think that Ave is going to help me like the chalice. It's up here now. Awesome. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its prayer. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth and love, and to help one another. El amor es el espíritu de esta iglesia, y el servicio es nuestra oración. Esta es nuestra gran promesa, vivir juntos en paz, buscar la verdad con amor y ayudarnos los unos a los otros. Good morning. Just got to rearrange some supplies over here. I have some show and tell, actually, this morning. That's what this basket is all about. I definitely would love some helpers when we, just a few minutes. I'll introduce it first so it all makes sense. Good morning. My name is Rose. I serve as this congregation's religious educator. I'm so glad to be with you all this morning. Among the many changes happening right now, the big, larger scale change that we're talking about in this morning service is some changes that are happening in our denomination, in Unitarian Universalism. This morning, we're talking about some of the changes to how we articulate our shared faith values, how the language that we're using um, to guide ourselves going forward. Um, and that will all be explained a whole lot more later in the service. But I wanted to start with a sort of frame to think about change and some of the things that have happened in the world since our Unitarian Universalist principles, which are what we've used to guide our shared faith for almost 40 years. What was happening in the world then, and, and what's, what's changed? So I, I'll... Um, Acknowledge Reverend Jamie Dingus was my inspiration for this message. And what she said, which I totally agree, is when we think about change, technology is one of the things that's changed the most in the past 40 years, right? And so this week, I did some, some digging in the archives, which meant that I asked my dad to look in his basement. <laughs> And I have some, some artifacts, some, well, fossils is maybe a strong word, but definitely artifacts to share with you all. And I'm hoping some, some of the kids here today might help me look through these artifacts so we can see what we have and, you know, explain it to the room, because not, maybe not everyone knows. Okay, I'm curious. Wow. <laughs> Nola's shaking your head. Um, does anyone know what this is? A cassette. Do any of the kids know what a cassette is? No, I'm getting, sh no, shaking of heads. A cassette was one of the main ways to listen to music back in 1985, right? That was really a big deal. I have a little cassette player here. This is definitely a fossil. And then what, what else has come after a cassette? To CD, yep, I have a CD too. Also an artifact. I have a few, these actually are from Rip and Heather because they're a little bit on the newer side. Anyone remember one of these? This is a little MP3 player from maybe the early 2000s. Okay, and this is also an artifact at this point. Anyone remember? An iP iPod, iPod, whole different era. <laughs> so these are just some of the ways that listening to music has changed over the past 
40 years. I wonder, so what, these are the ways that it's changed. What stayed the same in that time? Anyone? People like music, exactly. People like music and people want to be able to hear music. I have just one other artifact for you all. This one's a little bit heavier. It's hard to bring out. Oh, yes. Anyone, anyone use one of these show of hands? No, okay, a few people, okay. This looks a, a little bit different than this item right here. Okay, so the way that we talk to each other on the phone has changed, but what's, what stayed the same? We like to talk to each other, exactly, we wanna connect. And the point of all this is that a lot changes the technology that we use changes, but also a lot stays the same. And I think as we're thinking about these changes in Unitarian Universalism, from our principles to the, the new values, the new articulation of values, we can think of that as the kind of technology of our faith. Our fundamental theology, our way of being, and, and what we care about is not changing through this time just the way that we're talking about it, the, the technology we're using to frame those conversations. That's all that's changing. And our new technology, these values of pluralism, interdependence, equity, transformation, justice, generosity, and love, this is something that we're hoping can, can meet the modern moment a bit more instead of something that was written when this was the main way of communicating, of listening to music. I hope that's a useful frame as we move through the service and talk a bit more about this change. We know that the change is hard, that it can be uncomfortable. It's hard to learn new technology, right? I think that's true for all of us. <clears throat> and we're hopeful that this will be the kind of positive growth that all of us can embrace as we move forward together in this faith community. Okay, thank you all. I am now going to ask Michael to lead us in our children's benediction. And any kids who want to join me for Children's Chapel will head on through that door. Thank you. For you shall go out in joy for you shall go out in joy and come back in peace and come back in peace blessed be Friends, this month we are in the middle of our stewardship campaign, and next week is our last week of our stewardship campaign, but each week we've been having a testimonial about why people come to this church, why they give, why this congregation matters to them. So I'd like to invite Carol Allen forward to share this morning's testimonial. Hello. My name is Carol Allen, and I came to Boston in 2000. And actually, before I start this, I would like to mention that last night, we made over $600 for the church and Music on Center. I've always been very skittish about religion, and um, I always thought it was for weak-minded people who had to have other people tell them what to do and how to think. And so when I learned about the UU Church, I decided maybe I should check that out. <laughs> and so when I moved to Havel in my late 30s, I did go over to the UU Church. I liked the sermons a lot, but I would never tell anybody that I was going to church because it was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> um, but I liked the minister, and one day she asked me to um, facilitate a workshop, the UUA workshop, about the goddess and the feminine principle in religion. It was called the Cakes of Queen of Heaven. Anybody know about that? 
a few people, yeah. And actually that changed my life because I not only learned about the goddess, but I also learned about my friends, about the congregation, about how people work together, and it was fantastic. And through that, I became part, one of, a board member, I was the chair of the board, I did lay-led services, I started the New Moon Coffee House, and I really felt good about being there. And then I moved to Boston, and I heard about this other church that was probably okay for me, <laughs> it would be safe. And so I came here, and the minister at the time was Trisha Hart. I don't know if anybody remembers her. Fabulous woman, just such a kind and wise person. And um, I, at that time, I was going through some difficult times, and I knew I couldn't replicate what I was doing in Haverhill, but I, I did. I did try to fit in. But unfortunately, I started to feel disillusioned and really unwelcome. And so I left. I left the church. And, but I, I missed it. I missed the window, the morning sun in the window. I missed the poetry, the lyrics of the songs that make me cry. Um, and I missed my friends. Um, Joy Martin was one of them. Tori Hatch, before she was Tori Harrington. Harrington um, David and Ann Forth Forsyth and many others. And um, so I came back. And because I was supported so well by um, Reverend Ann, I started to try again. And I did, and I signed up for the Winter Fair the very first year, met the amazing Jennifers <laughs> at that time. Um, she also helped me, supported me in starting Music on Center, which was about the same time. And little by little, I started to feel like I really did belong somewhere. And so that was amazing. And then I... I just started noticing how many people give. This is such a giving congregation. And giving in so many different ways. Money, yes. <laughs> Pledges, yes but also in all the ways that you don't see, you know? There's the, the more obvious ones, but there's the coffee hour, and there's the fixing the leaky, leak in the basement, there's, fix, there's grant writing, there's all these things that people do that you don't even see sometime, and I think that's amazing. I just love the fact, I love the giving part. And what I found out is that the giving actually gives you a sense of belonging. And I think that's really important. And I think it's something to think about when we're pledging, that you, when you pledge, you are an owner of this place. You belong to this place. And, the, and you don't have to be a member. <laughs> I wasn't a member until 2020. <laughs> but it all helps, and maybe the other people in this committee will tell you more about this, but it seems to me, I think I've heard that it doesn't matter so much how much you give, but the, it's the idea that you are part of the group and that the percentage of participation, I believe, is an important factor. So I am glad to have given to the church. And the other thing that I need to mention is I am learning to accept help. <laughs> Jennifer, help me out with that. <laughs> and um, so... Thank you for all the things that you do here, and thank you so much to the caring ministry team to help me through the last two surgeries, and all the rides and meals and love and support and cards and phone calls. It, it means a lot, and so I'm really happy to accept the help and realize it is, it is part of the belonging, and belonging is good. And love is indeed the spirit of this church. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carol. Friends, now is the time in our service when we transition to a time of contemplation and prayer and hearing one another deeply. So this morning we are sharing spoken joys and concerns, and about once a month we share our joys and concerns in a spoken format. Other weeks we have an opportunity to write them down um, 
but this morning we will we will join in sharing spoken joys and concerns. I'll invite you up after we sing our hymn. If you're joining us online and would like to have a joy and concern spoken, and I'll light a candle for you, you can type it into the chat and I will read it um, out loud. So I invite us to center ourselves, find a quiet space within us, feel ourselves here and now, and enter and enter into this time with our um, centering him filled with loving kindness. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well, may I be peaceful and at ease, may I be whole, may you be filled with loving kindness, may So friends, if you have a joy or a concern that you would like to have spoken into this space and held by others, I invite you to come forward now. And I'm going to invite a special joy and blessing from our caring ministry team um, to start us off. Gratitude and blessing, I suppose. Hi, I'm Susan Karen. Jennifer Buckwald. Um, it is with sadness that we will be saying goodbye to Helen Garrettson soon. I usually don't start getting upset until the last paragraph, but anyway. Helen is moving um, to Austin, Texas to be closer to her family. She's been coming to Theodore Parker since January 18th, 2012. Yes, as a member. Thank you, Heather. Helen joined the caring ministry team this past November. Her experience as a social worker provided the team with valuable ideas and alternative views. Although Helen was only on the team for a short period, her quiet presence left a big impression. In fact, Helen has always been getting things done, whether at coffee hour, participating on the membership team, or in the community where she has been active in tutoring English and uh, she was a guardian at Lightham, to name a few. Helen's positive outlook and spirit of joy was evident once when I was at the Y. I heard a high-pitched singing voice coming from the weight area and thinking, what is that noise? <laughs> <laughs> I turned to look and there was Helen singing with her earbuds in and, lift and lifting weights engaged in what looked like a blissful moment. <laughs> Helen, although we are sad you are leaving, we're happy that you'll be where you want to be. We wish, you <clears throat> we wish you a healthy, safe journey and know that you'll make a difference wherever you are. We will dearly miss you. Thank you. I, 
I just want to say that when I had my back surgery and I was asking people to walk with me, Helen was one of those people. And it's the first time I ever had real contact with her after her being like not around for a while or something. I was so excited because I've never met such a positive, outgoing person as, as Helen, and her smile is authentic. You know, you don't see that a lot. You see people doing it just because they have to, but not with Helen. And so I'm, I'm definitely going to miss you a lot in, in a lot of ways, and especially our, our Friday morning walks and getting together. So thank you. Thank you, Helen. We're going to light a candle for your, for your next uh, adventure. Hi, I'm Stency. I'm Robin. And uh, we're right. We're going to light a candle of joy. Uh, we just learned that our daughter, um, <coughs> Caitlin, is expecting a baby. Our, <laughs> our, our first grandchild uh, due in October. So we're thrilled. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, thanks, Reverend Heather, and I'm Claire Barker. I know there's going to be a lot of time to appreciate the music program this spring, and I want to add my appreciation for Yukiko and just note that the Calithumpian Consort, of which she's a vital part, is doing a free concert this Friday in Wayland, and if you want more detail, you can check with me. Hi, everyone. Um, I moved to West Roxbury 20 years ago. I read the book Bowling Alone and realized that I needed to be part of a community. And I, there were three churches in West Roxbury, two big Catholic churches. There was a Jewish temple, and this was the only one left. So I, I walked in one day and sat right over there and listened to Lily, and I kept coming. And so I did find a community, and I thank you. I'm Karen, and um, I'm lighting a candle of gratitude for Michael, for all that you've brought us, and um, all, the, all the genres that you play, from jazz to blues and the bands you've introduced us to and brought to the church. And I also wanted to light another candle um, of gratitude for the life of um, David Mixner, who died um, this past month at age 77 from COVID complications, long COVID. Um, David was a tireless advocate for LGBTQIA rights and um, his entire life. And um, he, he was advocating against the Vietnam War. Um, he strategized and helped defeat the ban on lesbian gay teachers. And um, he um, had a sit down protest in front of the White House when his friend Bill Clinton came out with the ask, don't tell policy. And he was very involved with um, um, support around AIDS when the AIDS epidemic was going on and wasn't being talked about. So I'm thinking of him and thinking of it, him especially during these times when we have the book bans and loss of um, transgender health rights. And so thinking of him. Hi, I'm Cindy Bergeron. And um, I'd like to light a candle for my dear friend, Carolyn, 
uh, my friend of decades, and um, she's a brilliant woman, a scientist, and um, she now has um, dementia. So it's just very sad to see how she's changing very rapidly and losing so much, but at the same time, her essence is still there. And um, so I want to celebrate the person that she still is. Good morning, my name is Jake. I'm six months coming to TPC. Um, about three years ago, I was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis, which is an autoimmune disorder that attacks my joints, skin, and connective tissues. Um, and as it's gone on and progressed, and we've been trying to find treatments that work without more side effects, um, I've really been forced to learn to live with a disability, especially having young kids. Um, and what that means for my relationship and my own life. And so I want to light a candle and a prayer of loving kindness for all of us who are learning what it means to live with disability and being forced to restructure our lives around bodily needs that we can't control. I've decided if this is a goodbye day for Helen, I need to add my goodbye. She and I have known each other since freshman dorm days. <laughs> and she was my contact with Boston for the 40 years I lived in Virginia. So when I heard, she told me that she was coming to this little church with a small congregation, and it was a real old building, and she loved the minister, but she wasn't a member yet. And I said, be careful joining an old building <laughs> with, with a small congregation. <laughs> and then I found out that this place knew how to keep the old building upright. And I decided when I got back to Boston in 2010 that I would join Helen at Theodore Parker Church. So I'm going to miss her. No. So the beginning of this year, I was 200 pounds. Now I'm 192. I'm Deb Ferenz, and I, I really like the Jewish tradition called the Yarzeit, which is that you light a candle on the anniversary of a loved one's death. I won't be here next Sunday, which is the anniversary of my mother's death. Uh, she once described herself as a reverent agnostic, which I think sums up, <laughs> sums up what I am as well. I'm James Cross. Um, earlier this week, we lost a close family friend, uh, Rachel Sherman, to a two-year battle with pancreatic cancer. It's been a very hard week in that regard, but as much as it's a sorrow and we wish the best for her family, her husband and two children, um, 
She was an enormously bright light in so many people's lives, so this is a perfect way to honor her. Hi there, it's Kari. I haven't seen you guys in person in a while. Um, so I can't help remembering the first time I came here, my, um, my son Alex was going to Sunday school for the first time. And he was three, he's now 27. And my daughter Elise, you know, eventually, you know, she was a tiny baby. And, you know, I see Doug sitting out there and Carol and your daughters carried my baby around in the room and played and just the um and rose was rose was in my um sunday school group that i had for years and years and years and it was just it was so much fun so i think a really important thing to remember is um just i saw the word lifespan on the words today and i was thinking that it has kind of been a lifespan for me carol was one of my friends reaching out just kindness brought us together and Ben Fox I'll never forget Casey at the bat thank you so much so anyway thank you and good luck good luck with love I wanted to uh, give thanks for the darkness of these windows to to uh, Joel, primarily, who wrote the grant proposal and uh, help with from Marianne. We have a few online, one from Charlie and Carol Landritis. This coming week, I'm having several days of surgery at Beth Israel. Please keep me in your thoughts. We'll light a candle for that. And from Andrea Doremus, Doremus, my mom is allowing blood transfusions to raise the hemoglobin, hemoglobin and hemocrit of her red blood cells. Please send her some extra oomph. A candle from Sunil Saran, a candle of joy for my retirement as of March 31st. Yay. And for all of these joys and concerns that remain in our hearts unspoken, I'll light a final candle. And friends, let us join together in a space of prayer and meditation. Holy One, we are a people of transformation, of transitions, changing and evolving throughout our lives. We know that transformation requires of us a delicate balance of holding on and letting go of love, and loss of greetings and goodbyes. Holy One, through all of the transformations, through all of the transitions, we are held by a love that is beyond our understanding, but never beyond our reach, holding us in every moment of our lives. This love that shows up in community, in quiet contemplation, in the stillness of our hearts, in family, in connections, in nature. May we reach for that love and no notice that love that is always there whenever we need it. 
Together we rest into several moments of shared silence. Before we begin our reading, I'm just going to introduce this as the new text of Article 2, which we'll be talking about throughout the rest of our service. But I want you to hear it as a reading because I think the words and the language are really beautiful and meaningful, and we'll have the words up on the slides because they're a bit long. As Unitarian Universalists, we covenant congregation to congregation and through our association to support and assist one another in our ministries. We draw from our heritages of freedom, reason, hope, and courage, building on the foundation of love. Love is the power that holds us together and is at the center of our shared values. We are accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. Inseparable from one another, these shared values are interdependence. We honor the interdependent web of all existence. With reverence for the great web of life and with humility, we acknowledge our place in it. We covenant to protect earth and all beings from exploitation. We will create and nurture sustainable relationships of care and respect, mutuality and justice. We will work to repair harm and damaged relationships. Pluralism. We celebrate that we are all sacred beings, diverse in culture, experience, and theology. We covenant to learn from one another in our free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace our differences and commonalities with love, cu curiosity, and respect. Justice. We work to be diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where all thrive. We covenant to dismantle racism and all forms of systemic oppression. We support the use of inclusive democratic processes to make decisions within our congregations, our association, and society at large. Transformation. We adapt to the changing world. We covenant to collectively transform and grow spiritually and ethically. Openness to change is fundamental to our Unitarian and Universalist heritages, never complete and never perfect. Generosity. We cultivate a spirit of gratitude and hope. We covenant to freely and compassionately share our faith, presence, and resources. Our generosity connects us to one another in relationships of interdependence and mutuality. Equity. We declare that every person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. We covenant to use our time, wisdom, attention, and money to build and sustain fully accessible and inclusive communities. Thank you, Ruth. 
Friends, this seems like an important, as I re read through these values, I just wanted to take a moment to name again that we are in the midst of our stewardship campaign. And I think about it in terms of harnessing our financial resources to build and sustain this congregation, a congregation that seeks to embody the values of this faith, the values of justice, equity, pluralism, transformation, interdependence, generosity, and most of all, love. And I love this graphic right here that, that places love at the center and the values of our faith around it. And I wanted to say just a heartfelt thank you to everybody who has pledged so far. And if you haven't, to encourage you to pledge if you can, as soon as you can. As you know, as many of you know, most of our operating budget is made up of pledges. And in order to build a budget for the next year, we need to have a sense of how much money we're working with. And pledging is one of the ways I think that we make our love for this congregation and for this faith tangible. So as was mentioned earlier, even if your pledge is small, it's so important that we have widespread participation. Our goal is 90 pledges this year, and we aren't quite there yet, but whether you've made a pledge in the past and just haven't done it yet, or whether this is your first time pledging, welcome. I encourage you to make that pledge as soon as possible and to see a member of the stewardship team who maybe can raise their hands and wave if you have questions um, after worship. So in the meantime, I want to also just thank everybody for all of the ways, it's been mentioned so many times in this service before already, but all of the ways that you express your love for this congregation. So thank you for bringing, making that love tangible. Community is a spiritual practice in our Unitarian Universalist congregation. We give to remind ourselves of how many gifts we have to offer. We give to remember that we are a part of nothing bigger than ourselves, part of something we really are. <laughs> we give because we believe in music and sacred space. We give with gratitude for all that we have been given and with the faith that together we have more than enough. Links to donate will be in the chat, or you can take a meditative moment writing out a check and sending it to the church after the service. Ushers will be coming around the sanctuary to collect an offering from those in the pews who wish to donate something more tangible. As Yukiko shares her wonderful gift of music, an offering to sustain this congregation of memory and hope will be gratefully received. Thank you.
So friends, I know it's a little bit late, but I will just say my sermon is on the shorter side this morning. So this morning, I want to share a little bit of the story of how our larger faith, our Unitarian Universalist denomination, is seeking to articulate who we are. And many people have heard about changes to Article 2 being proposed, which we've talked a little bit about already in this service. But if you are newer to Theodore Parker Church or Unitarian Universalism, you might be thinking, Article what? So this chapter of our story begins in 1961, when the Unitarian and Universalist denominations merged to become Unitarian Universalism. And these two, when these two denominations merged, they needed to create a whole new structure of how they did everything, including, and I know that this is very exciting, they needed new bylaws. <laughs> and in these new bylaws, the second article, Article 2, contained the principles and purposes of the new association. And in the merging of the denominations, they sought to articulate what held this new religious denomination together, what they, what they believed in common. And so they approved this set of principles. The original Article 2 of our bylaws, written in 1961, I'd like to read to you. It's a little bit like pulling out some old technology. So as I read them to you, I want you to keep your eye out for phrases that you recognize, maybe, and to also just see how it lands. So I believe we have some slides so you can read it again for people who are more <laughs> oriented toward that kind of processing. The members of the Unitarian, so again, 1961. The members of the Unitarian Universalist Association, dedicated to the principles of a free faith, unite in seeking to strengthen one another in a free and disciplined search for truth as the foundation of our religious fellowship. To cherish and spread the universal truths taught by the great prophets and teachers of humanity in every age and tradition immemorially summarized in the Judeo-Christian heritage as love to God and love to man. To affirm, defend, and promote the supreme worth of every human personality, the dignity of man, and the use of the democratic method in human relationships. To implement our vision of one world, by striving for a world community founded on the ideals of brotherhood, justice, and peace. To serve the needs of member churches and fellowships, to organize new churches and fellowships, and to extend and strengthen liberal religion. And lastly, to encourage cooperation with men of goodwill in every land. Why are we laughing? <laughs> Okay, so who here recognizes some of the phrases? If you've been around a while and, and maybe know the current principle, who here principles, who here recognizes some of the phrases? Yeah? Um, what were some of the phrases that you recognized? Search for truth. Fellowship of men. <laughs> what was that? Inherent dignity. World community. And who also here um, feels like it was written in the 1960s? <laughs> <laughs> to me, it, it sounds both familiar and dated, right? But these principles served our faith well for a few decades. And now the founders of our Unitarian Universalist faith, during the time of the merger, put in to a mandate into the bylaws that every 15 years we would review Article 2 because they knew that as a religious, as a living tradition, we would regularly need to ask ourselves, does the Article 2 core language reflect who we are now and who we want to be? So there was a mandate to review them every 15 years, and guess when the most recent version of Article 2 was last revised? Now, these are the principles that we've, we've you know, the seven principles that you may know. That's what Article 2 means. Guess when they were last revised? 1985, three years before I was born. So in, 1920, in 1985, about 20 years after this first version had been written, there was a call to revise them again. And this call, call was largely driven by 
unsurprisingly, women who are calling for more gender inclusive language. And in order for this change to be adopted, it needed two subsequent votes at two general assemblies, which is the annual business meeting of our denomination to change these bylaws. And so in 1985, a new version of these principles were passed and those are the principles that we currently have. So I'd like to read the current principles to you as well. And they're also be on our screen. We, the member congregations of the Unitarian Universalist Association, covenant to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and society at large, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all, and respect for the interdependent web of existence of which we are a part. So do these sound familiar? Right. And I'm not going to read the new proposed version again to you. We've read that during our reading, but I, I will say that I see some of the phrases kind of in, in the new version as well, phrases from this one, much like we see the 1961 translate to the 1985 version. But I want to name that the, tra the 1985 version that we have now have been around for so long that most of us, including myself, have never known Unitarian Universalism without them. And I have been a Unitarian Universalist for 35 years. But it has been nearly 40 years since we revised these. And there were some changes proposed in 2009 that did not make it through our democratic process, as can sometimes happen. But the time has come to review this section of our bylaws again and ask, is this still serving us in the best way possible in 2024? Because I think to ask that question is what it means to be a living tradition. It means that we are constantly evolving and changing and transforming. And in fact, transformation is our worship theme this month, and it is one of the proposed values in this new revision of the bylaws. And I'll remind you again of the other values being proposed in Article 2. They are justice, interdependence, equity, transformation, pluralism, and generosity, all centered around love, which is at the center of our faith. And friends, one of the things that most moved me when I first heard about these changes, and I will also just note that I am actually a late adopter of technology. I understand that I'm a millennial, but it took me forever to get one of these. But one of the things that first moved me when I heard about the changes being proposed was pointing out that nowhere in the 1985 version of Article 2 was love mentioned. And for me, I do believe that love is at the center of our faith. And I also think that in 1985, that was not how we talked about love. That was not how we used language. That how we understand ourselves, how we relate to our, the world around us, shifts and grows, shifts as we learn and grow about the world around us and as the world around us changes. Because as Unitarian theologian James Luther Adams reminded us, revelation is not sealed. So earlier this week, as we were discussing the worship topic for today, Rose and I were both reflecting on our own religious education as young people raised in, in Unitarian Universalism. And we were reflecting on how much our religious education was centered around the principles and how difficult they are to remember or to articulate or to say, describe our religion to friends at school who asked what our church was like. So show of hands, who here has ever struggled to explain Unitarian Universalism to someone who is unfamiliar with our faith? And who here has ever um, muttered something incomprehensible about how we have seven principles as though that clarified it. <laughs> because I certainly have. And now Rose and I were talking this week about how as religious educators, I served as a religious educator for nine years prior to coming to Theodore Parker Church. As religious educators, it's been very difficult to use the principles as a teaching tool. But she shared with me that 
as she was working with the kids in our congregation in Children's Chapel, preparing for the installation a few weeks ago, how many of the kids talked about love and how clear they were in emphasizing that love was critically important in talking about Unitarian Universalism. And this year, our Children's Chapel programming has been centering around these themes, these new values, as have our worship, as have our worship themes. But I believe it's sinking in. I believe that there is something in the simplicity of naming those values that can really help us to open our doors more widely. And for me, I would not have thought to use the word love to articulate or to describe Unitarian Universalism when I was a child, but it is for me the driving power of what compels me and what com I believe my faith calls us toward in working for justice, in honoring our interdependence, in building a world of equity and in being open to transformation. And to be clear, I don't think that these values are new to Unitarian Universalism. I think they are a new articulation of our faith, of how we talk about faith. But at the core, our faith is not changing. But as a living tradition, I do think it is important that we are always undergoing the process of self-reflection and self-examination, which can often lead us to change and transformation. And by asking, how can our current technology stay relevant to the needs of the world and our faith in this moment? But friends, I also want to acknowledge that change and that transformation can be really hard. For some, it might feel like we are erasing our history or perhaps losing our center. Change can often feel like loss, and that's sometimes because it is. But I will remind us that I also have never known Unitarian Universalism without these principles, and I know many people who upon reading these 1985 principles felt like they had found a home here. It was what compelled them to commit to this faith, right? So this will be a big change. And people react in all sorts of ways to change. Some may feel extreme loss. Others may also be excited or may resonate with the new values more than the old principles. And I've noticed another thread when talking about these principles, which is an impulse toward wordsmithing the new ones. And I want to say I both understand it and I also want to ask, what is the deeper desire being expressed when we react to specific word choices, when we debate between inherent worth and inherent worthiness, or between principles and values? What, what is the longing underneath that? I will say that I myself have been in all of these places. It will be a big shift. It feels like I'm moving away from the familiar and the comfortable into the new. But at this point, for me, it also, and again, this is just speaking for myself, the 1985 principles feel more nostalgic than relevant. I personally am excited for this new articulation of our values that feels more shareable, more explainable, more rememberable. Within, <clears throat> within a couple of days, I was able to just rattle off the new ones, and I have been, again, been at the UU for 35 years, and I'm also a minister, and I've never been able to recite the principles. <laughs> <clears throat> so I feel like this new articulation is invitational, like it can bring us into the future rather than holding us in the past. And, it, and I, again, love that it places love at the center. I feel like it invites me to deepen my own spiritual practice and asking myself how I can embody these values, where they show up in my life. And I wonder what else this transformation might bring with it beyond the loss. What new opportunities we might have of sharing and articulating our faith in this way. Who might read these values and find themselves resonating so deeply that they know that they have found a faith home here? How might this new articulation allow us to more clearly and succinctly share who we are and invite others in? So friends, I, again, personally, am at a place of both and with this change. Change can both feel like loss and it can be the direction that we want to move in. Transformation necessitates leaving something behind and it can allow us to live into the future we want. So friends, as our faith seeks to grow and change, may we honor all of the complexity that transformation brings, loss and hope, letting go and holding on. And may we live into a future together that places love at the center.
May it be so, and amen. Friends, I invite us to rise in body or spirit for our closing hymn, number 131, Love Will Guide Us. Love will guide us, peace has tried us, hope inside us will lead the way on the road from greed to giving. Love will guide us through the hard night if you cannot like angels if you cannot speak before thousands you can give from deep within you you can change the world with your love love will guide us peace has tried us Hope inside us will lead the way on the road from greed to giving. Love will guide us through the hard night. Thank you. Please be seated. Our closing words are from Kent McCusick. In the name of all that is holy, may the connections between us inspire and sustain us. May the flame of life within us and among us be a sacred reminder that we are called to serve, to grow, and to love as we continue this journey of transformation. May it be so, and amen. A few brief announcements this morning. Please, if you are here in person, join us for coffee hour next door or um, breakout rooms if you're on Zoom. We'll have breakout rooms uh, started right after the service. Today is also our very special Mystery Friends reveal party. So if you participated in our Mystery Friends program, which is a program where people wrote pen pals to people that they didn't know who they were, it was a mystery, today you will find out who your pen pal has been and we will have a little party next door to, during coffee hour to celebrate. You're all welcome at the party, but you won't find out who your pen pal was if you didn't have a pen pal. <laughs> Today is also our new member orientation and class. If you are a newer to TPC, whether you're a visitor, a newer member, you want to just meet some other people who are identify as newer to TPC, uh, to Theodore Parker Church, please join us at 1215 in the parlor. Even if you haven't RSVP'd, we will welcome you and we'll have some pizza. I think it's probably too late to sign up for childcare, but if you do need childcare in order to come, let us know and we will um, double check that. This uh, Tuesday, a couple of things are happening. We've got UU Advocacy Day. Who should they, can you wave your hand if you should talk to, talk to Deb if you would like to know anything, and Allison if you'd like to know anything about Advocacy Day. That evening we also have a discussion on the movie Stamped from the Beginning. Um, feel free to look at the weekly announcements and TBC Talk for more information about that discussion group. And we also have a brief pledge update from our stewardship team. So this will be very brief. Um, as you know, we have 90 pledges as our goal, and we're a bit behind. This is our third out of four weeks, and we have 38. So we're at just over 40%. I will say that of those uh, 38 pledges, we're doing really well towards meeting our goal, as you can see. Um, we're at slightly over two-thirds of our dollar goal, which is great. Um, one thing about the 38 pledges, I would say, of those 38, three are brand new pledgers to our congregation. So that's really wonderful, and thank those people so much for their pledges, which also means that folks who are regular pledges to our congregation, we're looking for your pledge. Thank you. 
And Yukiko will close us out with Menuet 2 from the French Suite from Bach. <laughs>